Hey guys, Jessica here, and today I'm talking about my new favorite way of entertaining, and that is with a grazing table. If you haven't heard or seen about grazing tables, it is a very elaborate looking, at least, table that has a bunch of snacks and bite-sized pieces of your favorite kinds of food. The cost of your grazing table can range depending on the quality of your ingredients and how large of a space you have to fill. I'd say on average, you probably want to expect to spend from $100 to $150 on maybe a 5 to 6 foot table. For my grazing table, I was trying to feed about 25 people. Typically, you'll want to plan on each person eating about 10 to 15 appetizer bites if you're only having your grazing table for your meal. If it's before dinner, plan on about six appetizer bites per person. As for your dips and your spreads on your table, people typically eat about three ounces or a third of a cup per person of dip. And if you're including alcohol at your party, you'll wanna have about half a bottle of wine per person or one to two beers per hour per person or about three cocktails per person. When you're picking up all of your ingredients at the grocery store, Make sure to pick up some small plates, toothpicks, and serving tongs as well. The key to keeping the costs a little bit cheaper is making sure that you have some bulk item ingredients that are cheaper than um, maybe say your meat and your cheeses. So those are the items that you can spend more on and get a higher quality versus your popcorn, your olives, your pickles, the filler items are where you can save some money. There really is no right or wrong way to fill your grazing table. Go ahead and buy ingredients that you and your guests are gonna love, whatever that means. I will link a list of my ingredients that I used for my table, but again, no rules, buy what you like. I like to group mine into categories to make sure we have a variety of tastes and textures for our table. So first off, we're gonna start with some meat. Um, some of my favorites are salami, prosciutto, uh, soppressata sausage, summer sausage. We're gonna go ahead and cut up all of our meat and sausage the night before and put it in the refrigerator overnight. So on the day of your party, you can go ahead and just lay it all out on the table and you don't have to worry about the prep. When it comes to your grazing table, my favorite thing to pick out is the cheese. It's the thing that I get to have most fun with and there are lots of different options that you can choose from. Some of my favorites are Gouda, sharp cheddar, goat cheese, manchego, or blue Stilton. Again, you're going to want to make sure that you mix up what cheeses you have to make sure everyone has something that they like. For my cheese, I like to make sure that I also cut it up so it looks a little bit different and has some different looks and textures to it. So for this cheese, we're going to go ahead and slice it into long triangles. It's also fun if you have a harder cheese to crumble it up or to break it into little bite-sized pieces. So go ahead and cut all of your cheese up the night before as well. Store in a fridge. I'd suggest storing it in a separate container for each cheese. That way their flavors don't combine. And then you won't have to worry about that on the night of the party. You're gonna already have it prepped and ready to go. For our goat cheese, we're gonna do a little something special. We are going to add some goat cheese, some honey, and some red pepper flakes just to give it a little bit of an extra touch. When you're making your grazing table, I'd suggest doing a combination of homemade and store-bought. That way you're not doing everything homemade and you aren't gonna stress yourself out um, for too much prep, which may not be a problem for everybody, but I tend to like to home make a lot of my things. And so sometimes I can get over excited and not have enough time. For this, we're gonna go ahead and buy some store-bought dips, but zhuzh them up a little and make people think that maybe they were homemade. You'll wanna start out by adding all of your store-bought dips to bowls that you already have at home. I like to just add a little something extra to them to make it look like maybe they weren't store-bought. For our dessert hummus, we are going to add a chocolate-covered strawberry. To our tzatziki, we're gonna add a little extra dill just sprinkled on top. And then to our hummus, we'll just add a little bit of olive oil to top it all off. Go ahead and do whatever makes sense for your dips that you buy for your grazing table. As for a lot of the other ingredients on your grazing table, you're not actually gonna have to prep them. So go ahead and buy any of your favorite veggies, usually veggies that can be eaten raw um, with your dips and with the other ingredients that you bought. I also like to buy nuts, almonds, pistachios, cashews are some of my favorites. Um, I also like to get some briny kind of items. So for this, um, we'll go ahead and use some olives and some sweet pickles. As for your sweet side of your table, I like to pick up some fruit as well as some desserts. So for my grazing table, I went ahead and included a little sweet section with some fruit and some desserts. I did homemade my cupcakes, but you could easily pick some up 
Um, these are mini cupcakes, so you could pick some of those up from the store as well. Go ahead, be creative about what fruit and what dessert you'd like to include and what your guests would enjoy as well. So now is the fun part. Go ahead and start by laying out some butcher block paper on your table that you're gonna use. I picked up my butcher block paper just from the dollar store along with some plastic tongs and some paper plates which you will not want to forget. When it comes to styling your table, this is the most fun part in my opinion. There's no right or wrong way to do it so just go ahead and have fun with it. I would suggest determining what is going to be your main focal feature for your table and start there. For me, I had a couple anchor points. One was my big tray of vegetables that were kind of rainbow colored in the center and the other was my dessert section with my cake stands. Start with these. If you have any cutting boards, cake platters, or big dishes that you want to set out on your table, go ahead and get those set up first as your anchor points. I started out with my dessert section because, of course, it's the most fun. And I went ahead and placed my cupcakes along with some broken up dark pieces of chocolate along the one side of the table. I wanted to keep just about a fourth of the table for desserts. The rest was all going to be savory. An important part of styling your table is going to be to mix up the colors and the textures that are laying next to each other. You can see that from my dessert side, I wanted to vary which cupcakes were sitting next to each other depending on what type of frosting they had and what they looked like visually. Typically, your guests are going to eat around two to three bite-sized pieces per person, so make sure that you're kind of prepping that amount for your table. After we get everything for the dessert set, we're going to go ahead and move to the savory side. On the savory side, I knew I needed a tall point since I had my cake stand as the anchor on the left side, I needed something tall on the right side. So I went ahead and just took a regular drinking glass and put some breadsticks inside of that. And then our main focus on our savory side is gonna be our big tray of veggies, which I got to lay out in color order, which I think is very pretty. Go ahead again, you don't have to be that crazy if you want to throw them down, there's no right or wrong order as to which way they need to lay. I went ahead and used a giant dip platter that I had to be another anchor point on our table. I filled the middle with some French onion dip, which you can find on my website if you're interested, and on the outside just some pita chips. From there we're going to go, again to my favorite part, the meat and the cheese, which for this we're going to make it look a little bit fancier by making what some people like to call meat flowers. You just simply fold the a sausage in half twice and lay it down. Once you start to tuck the meat under and on top of each other, they'll kind of lay flat and lay in place. Since we have quite a few meat and cheese varieties, we're going to go ahead and spread them out amongst the table so we don't have them right next to each other. At this point, again, some people might start to get stressed out, not knowing where to place which meat, which cheese. I say there are no rules. Just try to place things next to each other that people would tend to eat together. So if a certain type of cheese pairs well with a certain type of meat, go ahead and place them close or next to each other so that way people kind of get the cue visually that they need to be eaten together. If you leave any of your cheese whole, remember that you're going to want to put a cheese knife next to it so people will have something to cut it with. At this point our table is starting to look kind of full which is super exciting and fun so now we just need to fill in the bulk items that I was talking about earlier. So this is going to include your bread, your fruit, your veggies, your popcorn, some of those cheaper items that again are going to give bulk to your table and are going to allow it to look really full and fun. Make sure before your table gets too full that you have all your bowls already out and on the table. So place all your little condiments full of nuts, your pickles, your olives. So that way, when you get to the end, all you're doing is adding in little bulky items. In order to keep your table fresh, plan on laying food out about 30 minutes before your guests arrive. If that timeline stresses you out, the night before, I like to place all my serving platters, boards, and dishes out on the table so those are preset. You can even place a sticky note on each dish according to what item you think should be placed in that dish. This will help make setup much more of a breeze on the day of your event. Go ahead and place the dips, veggies, fruit, nuts, and dessert out first since those can sit the longest without being refrigerated. Then, right before you plan on eating, or a few minutes before your guests arrive, you can place your meat and cheese out since they should really only sit out a maximum of two hours. Once you get everything placed on your grazing table, I promise it's going to look 
awesome. Whether or not you're personally happy with how you placed everything, I promise that your guests are going to walk in and be amazed at your table. Visually, it looks so fun and so appealing and people are going to want to dig in immediately. And the best part is seeing the finished product complete. You can check out the full details on my blog, homebodyeats.com, as well as grab your complete guide of all the ingredients that I used in today's video. Thanks for watching.